Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to our first Shabbat of our series in USA. We are celebrating Shabbat today from our headquarters in USA in Glenwood Springs, and you're all invited, both online and in person, to participate to our Shabbat launch -on. Uh, which are going to be every Saturday, starting today, July 24th, until September 4th, from 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. Mountain Time, USA, Colorado. So you, you are all welcome to join us, and please contact us via email at bohjm2013 at gmail.com for location details. Amen. And for the Shabbat service, we will be having that at 11 o'clock in the morning before the luncheon. Amen. Yes, our Shabbats always start at 11 a.m. and we usually take uh, about two hours, so we finish uh, around 1 p.m. and then we start our lunch home. So join us and uh, let's start with prayer. Abinu Malkenu, Abba Father, we thank you for this time of preparation of your bride, and we thank you for the time you have given us today to celebrate your Shabbat as a community, both online and in person, in the name of the Moshiach Yeshua. Let us have the courage and the boldness to pursue your will. In the name of Moshiach Yeshua, as it is in heaven. Amen. And now for the Italian speakers, we are going to share also this message. So, Shabbat Shalom a tutti voi, comunità in persona e in rete, e benvenuti al nostro primo Shabbat della serie Community Shabbat. Uh, avremo da oggi, 24 luglio 2021, fino al 4 settembre 2021, i nostri pranzi di Community Shabbat, Shabbat comunitari, a cui tutti voi potete accedere, e che siete in questa area di Glenwood Springs in Colorado, USA, e partecipare con noi anche, non solo in persona, ma anche online, e uh, celebrare insieme lo Shabbat. Per partecipare e unirvi a noi potete contattarci via email e scrivere a dohjm2013 uh, gmail.com per ricevere i dettagli della località. Amen. Iniziamo in preghiera. Inizieremo alle 11 di mattina qui, orario montagna del Colorado negli Stati oh, Uniti. Sì che uh, sarebbero le sette di sera uh, in Italia eh, per il culto. Poi per il pranzo eh, si inizia alle 13 del pomeriggio uh, qui in Colorado sempre, quindi uh, alle 9 di sera in Italia. Amen. E per ogni tipo di chiarimento su località e dettagli del, del tempo di... Uh, culto di Shabbat e di uh, pranzi di Shabbat, potete contattarci via mail. E preghiamo insieme in un malcheno. Abba, Padre, ti ringraziamo per questo tempo che ci stai dando oggi per celebrare il tuo Shabbat, un dono che ci hai donato, che hai donato agli uomini perché potessero godere della tua presenza della tua scrittura, della tua Torah e della tua comunità nel Moshia, in tutto il mondo, in Israele e nella diaspora. Ti chiediamo di darci saggezza, forza, coraggio in questo tempo di prova e di poter camminare nelle tue vie, nei tuoi precetti, in obbedienza alla tua Torah, nel nome del Moshia Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Grazie alla Rebezzin Gabriella per questi annunci 
e la preghiera. Adesso inizieremo con uh, l'accensione delle candele. Thank you, Reverend Saint Gabriella, for your the announcements and for the prayer. And now we will start with the candlelight. We will do it all in Hebrew, English, and Italian for everybody. Faremo le preghiere sia in ebraico, inglese e in italiano per tutti. Amen. E potete partecipare con noi all'accensione delle candele. E, le candele sono accese, come sappiamo, dalla, dalla donna uh, più, uh, diciamo, anziana della casa. E, e il numero delle candele dipende dai componenti della famiglia, minimo due per le donne sposate e una candela in più per ogni figlio e anche mh, partecipanti delle altre famiglie. Amen, delle altre mispacotti. Quindi... Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher kideshanu bemizvota, vetsivanu lecha lichner shel shabbat. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and has commanded us to be a light to nations and has given us Yeshua the, Mosh the Moshiach. The light of the world. Amen. Benedetto sei tu, Signore nostro Dio, Re dell'universo, che ci hai santificato con i tuoi comandamenti e ci hai comandato di essere una luce per le nazioni e ci hai dato Yeshua, Gesù, il Messia, la luce del mondo. Amen. Amen. Adesso faremo la benedizione della Coppa del Dino. Now we are going to bless with the blessing of the cup of uh, wine or grape juice. Barukata donai Eloheinu melech haolam, bore griha gahapen. Amen. Bless you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. And thank you, Yeshua, for shedding your blood for our salvation. Beato tu, Signore nostro Dio, re dell'universo, che crea il frutto della vita. Amen. E grazie, Yeshua, per aver sparso il tuo sangue per la nostra salvezza. Amen. E adesso faremo la benedizione del pane. Now we will. Do the blessing over the bread. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch Atadunai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Amotzi Lechem Minaret. Amen. Blessed be thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from out of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Yeshua, for breaking your body for us. Amen. Now in Italian, Amotzi Lechem in Aravets. Rendiamo grazie a Dio per il pane, le nostre voci si alzano in canto insieme, mentre si dice la nostra preghiera gioiosa. Grazie Yeshua per aver rotto il tuo corpo per noi. Amen. Ora aspettiamo il pane insieme e lo diamo a coloro che partecipano insieme a noi. Tempo di sale. Mettiamo un po' di sale che uh, rappresenta appunto la uh, sapienza e la luce di Hashem. 
Este el estado de la tierra. As it, it, the soul is the, the soul and the light and the wisdom of a shin. The soul to the world. Amen. Now we will do the blessing of our wives. With this of every mother, but it's only the most. Father, I thank you for the Reverend St. Gabriela, who you allowed me the honor and privilege to be her husband. And I ask you to use me to be a blessing to her, to encourage her, to strengthen her as best as I can <clears throat> through your Holy Spirit, through your Ruach HaKodesh. I ask you to bless her, bless her in everything she does, everything her hands touch, and every in every aspect of her life, her work, her rest, her uh, relaxation time, everything she does, and may every desire of her heart be fulfilled for her joy and for your glory. In the name of Yeshua, Amen. Ringrazio il Signore per mia moglie Gabriella, la Rebezzi Gabriella, e mi ha dato uh, l'onore e il privilegio di essere il suo marito. Chiedo di usarla per essere una benedizione per lei, per incoraggiarla, per rinforzarla quanto posso io tramite tuo Ruach HaKodesh, il tuo Spirito Santo. Bellisce le sue mani, che ogni cosa che lei fa ha pieno successo e che la benedici, la benedici in tutto quello che lei fa nel lavoro, nel riposo, nel tempo libero, e che ogni cosa possa essere uh, compiuta, ogni desiderio del suo cuore possa essere compiuto, sia per la sua gioia, ma anche per la tua gloria. Mm. E, Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us today on this beautiful Shabbat morning. Uh, my name is uh, Rabbi Harel Clint Fry, <clears throat> and I'm uh, here actually in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, for uh, a little bit as we are taking care of business for our ministry here. So I just want to thank you for joining us today uh, for the Parasha Aikib sermon, and we're going to be talking about turning to the source of our blessings. And Aikiv means because. And in the Torah portion for today, for today we read from uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 12, through chapter 11, verse 25. But, uh, the prophetic, or the Haftarah, we are going to read from Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 14, through chapter 51, verse 3. And for the Beit Harasha, which is the New Testament or New Covenant, we read from John 13, verse 31 through 15, verse 27, James chapter 5, verses 7 through 11, and Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. So there's not a whole lot this week in, as far as the Beit Harasha, whereas other weeks there are quite a bit more. And uh, so before we start, I'd just like to open this time in prayer. <clears throat> Abba Father, I want to thank you for joining, for uh, giving us the opportunity to read your word and study your word and to uh, learn more about who you are and your ways. We ask that you teach us and uh, that you would touch our hearts. Give us ears to listen, eyes to see. May that which comes out of my mouth come from your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, not from my flesh, and only be for your glory. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So, um, before we continue, we'd like to just um, mention the fact that we are here uh, in the United States up until uh, after the High Holy Days, in which will be in October. So if anybody would like to join us, 
we would love to have you with us and have you join us. So please, we have a contact link below in the video and just contact us if you'd like to uh, come and spend Shabbat with us. We would really enjoy it. We do, we'll have an Oneg after the sermon for those who would like to join us. Now, we will start with Deuteronomy chapter seven, verses 12 and 13. Because, or I kev, you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep, will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that he swore to your fathers. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. So last week in the parashah Hanan, Moses predicted that the people in future generations would be exiled from the promised land and scattered among the nations because they would turn from Hashem and worship idols. But Moses also foresaw that in the last days, they would once again seek him and obey his commandments. So the title of this week's parasha, Aikev, like I said, means because, and is using this parasha as a conjunction to create a relationship between experiencing Hashem's blessings and obedience to his Torah, which is just simply um, directions, you know, how you know, they're not commands, they're just how to live life, how he wants us to live life. So in connection with this, the Haftarah portion this week contains an important prophecy that provides us with added insight into how to walk in the blessings of Adonai through faith and obedience. These three faith, obedience, and blessings are seen operating in our forefather, Abraham, who had first believed and then out of faith obeyed Hashem and was circumcised. <clears throat> Not only did he do that, he traveled to the, to the land of Canaan as he was told to do. Abraham exemplified the concept that obedience is more than exercising our will over our own flesh. It is faith in action. Out of his faith flowed obedience to Hashem. So in Genesis 15, 6, we see that his faith was counted to him as righteousness. In the ancient Hebrew prophet uh, Yeshayahu, which is Isaiah, beckons us to look to Abraham, our father of faith. We are to be like him putting faith into action, then we too will experience the blessings that flow from obedience. It says in Isaiah 51, 1 through 2, listen to me, you pursuers of justice, you who seek Adonai, consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were dug. Consider Abraham, your father and Sarah, who gave birth to you. So now let's talk about the heel of the Messiah. The word Ikev comes from the verb hakav, which means to take by the heel. Similarly, the Hebrew noun akev means heel, as in the heel of, of a foot. So all these words share the root letters ayin, kof, and bet. Ancient Jewish sages interpreted this me dual meaning of ayin, kof, and bet to refer to the generation of the heels of Mashiach, or Messiah. The last generation of the exile is called ikvata de Mishicha or the heels of the Messiah, since that generation is expected to hear the footsteps of the Messiah. The word Akev is first used in the book of Genesis in an important prophecy. The seed of Chava, or Eve, will eventually crush the head of the serpent. It says in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity, or enmity between you, that is the serpent, and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel or a head. So this is the first messianic prophecy in the whole Bible. From it, we can understand that the enemy would attempt to strike at the heel of the Messiah like he did. Instead, however, our Messiah would crush the enemy's head and destroy the works of the devil at the very end. First of all, when he was raised from death and also when he will come back. It says in 1 John 3, 8, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So let's talk about faith in the promised land now, because in today's climate of rekindled anti-Semitism and also a huge rise in anti anybody who believes in uh, Adonai and who believes in Yeshua, <clears throat> Many consider it factually or politically incorrect to refer to Israel as land promised to the Jewish people 
and even there are many so-called uh, denominations or churches that are, are going this direction, especially some of the older, uh, older school churches. Okay. Um, so the word of Hashem has no such limitation. Hashem is the Lord of all the earth, but the land of Israel is unique among the nations, as we see, and it is not likely any other nation of the earth, or not like any other nation of the earth. So it is a land that Hashem still cares for and watches over continually, no matter what's going on over there. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 11 and 12, it says, the land you are crossing over to take possession of is the land of hills and valleys, which soaks up water when rain falls from the sky. It is the land Adonai your God cares for. The eyes of Adonai your God are always on it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So in Parashah Aikiv, Moses is continuing his closing address to the Israelites before they cross the Jordan River, which he began at the beginning of Deuteronomy. He tells them that if they are obedient to the Torah, they will prosper in the land that they are about to conquer. I always kind of like to make a joke. It's like, it seems like Moses, he knows he's going to be dying soon, so he's taking his time, definitely telling the people all these things, maybe to prolong his death. I don't know. I just... I always thought that was kind of um, funny. But in a way, it's very good that he's reminding them of these things. They need to be reminded because obviously they didn't remember for very long. So the people are to possess the land and not fear the nations living there because Hashem would expel them. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 16 through 22, you will devour all the peoples Adonai your God gives over to you. Your eye is not to pity them, you are not to serve their gods, for that would be a snare to you or a trap. Suppose you say in your heart, these nations are numerous, more numerous than I. How can I drive them out? You are not afraid of them. You are to be sure to remember what I deny your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs and wonders, the mighty hand and outstretched arm by which I deny your God brought you out. So will Adonai your God do to all the peoples you fear. Moreover, Adonai your God will send a hornet against them until the survivors and those in hiding perish before you. You should not be terrified of them since Adonai your God is in your midst. A great and awesome God, Adonai your God will drive away those nations before you little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them all at once or else the beasts of the field will multiply on you. <coughs> So here's why you couldn't get rid of all the people of land immediately. Otherwise, the beasts of the field would take over. Now, even today, Israel is not to fear the people of the land or those around them. For the God, our God is with us to help us, just as he helped us in ancient times in, in Egypt and in Israel. So although there are, of course, these terrorist organizations engaging in horrible battles to take the land from the people, the Jewish people, the Israeli soldiers obviously bravely risk their lives to restore the security of the land given to the Jewish people. They're always putting their lives on at risk. So while Israel's enemies might greatly outnumber her, the word of Hashem promises that he will watch over her day and night. He says in Psalm 121.4, he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Now, the plan to destroy Israel is of the enemy, Hasatan, and all those who make themselves Hashem's enemies will find themselves under the feet of Yeshua HaMashiach, okay? Jesus the Messiah. And this is found in Psalm 110, verse 1, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 13, for example. There are those who are not prepared to hear the biblical truth that Hashem has given the land of Israel to the Jewish people, but those who know their God will stand firmly upon the rock of Hashem's word. It's that simple. So let's talk now about turning to the source of blessing. It says in Psalm 121, verses 1 through 2, I raise my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come from? My help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. So in Israel, in these days, the terrible struggle against terrorism has caused many of Hashem's people to turn their hearts toward him as they search for help and victory. And this is good. <clears throat> So throughout the history of Israel, however, we do see over and over again that when Hashem blessed the Jewish people, 
Many soon forgot him as the source of their blessing and turned away from their devotion and obedience to Adonai. Kind of like what's happening here in America and other earth countries where the people are so <clears throat> doing so well, they forget who God is and who's the one providing all this goodness. Okay. So Hashem also said of Gomer, who is Gomer? He was a, un, she was the unfaithful wife of uh, the prophet Hosea. That she doesn't know it was I who gave her the grain, the wine, and the oil. I who increased her silver and gold, which they used for Baal. So this is found in Hosea 2.8. We must always remember that when we prosper in the land that he gives us, or we have a great job or whatever is happening, it is Hashem who is the source of our ever blessing people. We should never let pride rise in our hearts and think that it is our own abilities that are the source of all that we have and enjoy. <clears throat> but if we understand that, that what we have has been given us to, to us by Hashem, we are more likely to maintain an attitude of gratitude, as we say, and be good stewards using our blessings in a way that pleases Hashem and not just for our own selves, which you know, we can use the blessings. But we are when we get blessed, we need to bless others around us, those who don't have. Okay, each of us today should consider Moses' warning to the people of Israel, every one of us. It says in Deuteronomy 8, 17 through 18, you will think of yourself, to yourself, my own power and strength of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. And people that we hear say that, I got this job, I got this money, it's me because I am working hard and I'm the one who got this job. No, and then I got you that job. So let's continue. <clears throat> no, you are to remember Adonai, your God, because it is he who is giving you the power to get wealth in order to confirm his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as is happening even today. So uh, Hashem gives us the power to get wealth in order to confirm his covenant. Now, I'm not preaching this, uh, what many preachers or and many teachers are teaching nowadays, okay? The wealth, the whole uh, thing that many people are teaching. No, but however, if Hashem gives us wealth, it's from Him. Okay? Hashem gives us this wealth and power to get the wealth if He decides to give it. And though it is obedience that releases the blessings of Hashem, He is not so much after obedience as He is our hearts. He does want the obedience. He says that. Over. <clears throat> he wants our hearts. True obedience begins with love for Hashem and faith in his character. Therefore, even more than the physical circumcision of covenant, which is, of course, important, Hashem desires that each one of us be circumcised in our hearts. We cannot only change outwardly people, putting on a show of religion, character, of, or purity. We must change inwardly becoming soft, pliable clay in the potter's hands, <clears throat> okay? So it says in Deuteronomy 10, 16, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and don't be stiff-necked any longer. Hashem promises Israel that the rewards of love and obedience are great. He will drive the nations out of the promised land and give the Israelites success against those who are more powerful than they are. If we will love the Lord our God and cling to him and keep his mitzvot or his commandments, then he will faithfully care for us and protect us people. And this is a great assurance we have of his love. It says in Deuteronomy 11 verses 22 and 23, for if you will take care to obey my commandments, mitzvot, I am giving you, do them to love Adonai your God, to follow all his ways and to cling to him, then Adonai will expel all these nations ahead of you. And you will dispose nations bigger and stronger than you are. So, <clears throat> speaking of blessing God, also we want to talk about blessing God at meal time for our meals. So it's also a commandment to, to bless Hashem after eating. Notice I said after. It's okay to, to say even before. And in many Christian homes, for example, it is a tradition to offer a prayer of Thanksgiving before the meals. It's good. Uh, it's inherited from Judaism. In Judaism, it is a tradition to uh, bless Hashem for the food he has provided prior to eating it. 
And we read of Yeshua keeping this tradition several times in the Gospels. So sometimes the Christians refer to this as blessing the food, but in Judaism, the food is not blessed. We can ask Hashem to bless the food to our bodies, yes, but Hashem is blessed for providing the food. We say, thank you, Hashem, for providing this food. <clears throat> and then we can add on, please bless it to our bodies. So in any case, blessing Hashem before meals is a very precious tradition of the master and one we would do well to uh, start doing if we're not doing it. I've seen many people that just start digging in and eating. I mean, I've done it a few times in my life. And, and sometimes I'll stop and say, thank you for this food. But we need to thank him for the food, whether it's before or even after the meal. I like to do it both times. So the Torah commands us also to bless Hashem after we have eaten. If the Torah says, when you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given to you. Deuteronomy 8.10. So the Torah gives this commandment to the children of Israel so that they would not forget him. The materialism of wealth and success are dangerous to our souls, people. And we knew that. We can see this all around us. <clears throat> when we're fat and happy, we're apt to ignore Hashem, forget about his commandments, even turn away from him. Moses warned the children of Israel that their success and prosperity in the land of Israel would give them proud hearts and make them forget the Lord. He warned the Israelites not to tell themselves, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. So, like I said in Deuteronomy 8.17, this can kind of be compared, really, to a young student who received maybe an allowance from his father while he's studying. Okay, he studied the monthly allowance, covered all of his living expenses, his father also paid for his, uh, this tuition for the son. So, so long as the student depended on a monthly allowance money from his father, he would be, he was careful to meet all of his father's expectations in the school. Write home frequently, send an email, whatever call, <laughs> live in keeping with his father's directives. However, after taking a campus job, getting money for himself, the student found he no longer needed his father's monthly allowance for living expenses. He no longer worried about meeting his father's expectations. However, he would forget that his father was paying the tuition as well. <clears throat> so what's going to happen? His father's going to be like, hey, I'm not going to pay your tuition after a while because you're not writing to me. You're not letting me know how you're doing, this and that. Judaism preserves an ancient after, ancient after meals prayer of Thanksgiving that is still recited even to this day. The four blessings for the traditional grace after meals can be found in any Jewish prayer book. The oldest version of this prayer is preserved in the uh, Didash. This early, it's in a kind of an early apostolic age. Grace after meals was composed by early believers and they recited it at, together after the meals to fulfill the commandment found in Deuteronomy 8.10. So like the traditional Jewish version of grace after meals, it consists of four blessings thanking Hashem for provision and looking forward to the Messianic era, which is coming really soon. So it says, we thank you, our Holy Father, for your holy name that you have caused to dwell in our hearts and for the knowledge, faithfulness, and eternal life that you have made known to us through your servant, Yeshua. Yours is the glory forever. And this is the first doxology after the grace of the grace after meals from this didash. Uh, and so I find that very beautiful uh, to say grace after the meals. I always say also, thank you for this food even before, like I said, because uh, even Yeshua would thank his father before eating something. So for those of you who would like to accept Yeshua as your Mashiach, as your Messiah, your Savior today, I would like to invite you to do so because he's going to be coming back soon. And there's going to be a time when it's too late, especially for many. There's going to be great destruction upon this planet. All this beauty, all these wonderful places you see are going to be gone, destroyed. Okay, many of the people you see will no longer be on the face of this earth because of this death and destruction. It is a matter of fact, people, it's written in the book of, Apoc of the Apocalypse of the Revelation. It is found in other... Uh, prophetic books such as Isaiah and many other places. Daniel, 
So we know that the time's coming soon. We see the signs, we see what's happening with the world governments and everything happening where uh, <clears throat> getting more and more restrictive. And this is simply a matter of time before uh, the seven years of tribulation start. And when the peace treaty is signed, it's not when the believers get raptured and then the peace treaty and then the seven years starts. No, the, the sign of the seven years is the seven year peace treaty, which is signed with Israel. Okay, that is the beginning. Believers will still be here for a part of the seven years, at least uh, until uh, the seventh shofar, the seventh trumpet. So many will be captured, many will be imprisoned, many will be killed for their faith. And that'll be a time for a great falling away, unfortunately, and it's very sad. However, now is your time, if you have not decided to do so, to follow Yeshua and accept him as Moshiach, as Savior, as Messiah. If you are a Jew and you have doubts about this, just call it, or just don't call us, <laughs> write to us. We have a link below where you can write to us uh, through our website, and we will be glad to get back to you and give you something for free that you can read and you can decide for yourself. So if you'd like to say this prayer with me, I invite you to do so today. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu etarech ha-Yeshua b'Mashiach, Yeshua. In English, it's simply... Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation and Messiah, Yeshua. If you have prayed this prayer today, please contact us. We still have a free gift for you. Welcome to the family of Adonai. Now I want to close this time with you <clears throat> with the ironic blessing. Adonai Vishmarecha. Adonai Panavalecha Vihuneka. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to you. Thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> if you've not done so, we invite you to put like on the videos. Let us know what you think. If you have any comments, please give them as long as they're not uh, negative or derogatory. And um, if you have something deeper, obviously, a deeper question, please contact us through the contact link and um, subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to help us in any way, uh, we do everything for free, what uh, Hashem has told us to do. But if you'd like to support us in any way, uh, there is also a, a link below if you'd like to make a, a contribution uh, to help us with our ministry. So thank you for joining us today. May you be blessed. Shabbat Shalom. And now that we have heard the sermon, we will have our Holy Communion uh, together. Adesso che abbiamo sentito Simone possiamo fare la Santa Cena insieme. Father, we come before your throne. First of all, to ask you for forgiveness for our sin, because we recognize the fact that we are sinners. But through the death and resurrection and the shedding of the blood of your son Yeshua, we are new creations, new creatures. So I thank you for this, and I thank you for sending Yeshua down here to our salvation for those who believe in Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Grazie, Signore. Abba Padre, noi tutto voglio venire, vogliamo venire davanti al tuo trono e riconoscere il fatto che noi siamo peccatori. Ma chiunque crede in Yeshua, tuo figlio, sarà salvato. Grazie per la sua crucifissione e risurrezione e spargimento del suo sangue. Siamo nuove creature. E quindi grazie per questo, perché senza questo nessuno potrebbe essere salvato. Mm. Vogliamo ricordare questo oggi in 
want to remember this today. Remember the Yeshua. Amen. Amen. As Jesus was sitting around the table, he took the bread and broke it and gave thanks. And he passed it to his disciples and said, take this and eat this. This is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in memory of me. E mangiate tutti. Fate questo in ricordo di me. Grazie. Thank you. And we pass on the challah bread to all the participants so that each one of us can have our own keys to have Holy Communion. In, in Italian, noi passiamo la challah to a tutti i partecipanti in maniera tale che ognuno di noi possa spezzare il pane così come dice Yeshua e possa godere della sua presenza in ciascuno di noi. Amen. At the end of the supper, Yeshua took the cup and poured it, and he gave thanks. And he passed it to his disciples and said, Take this and drink this, all of you, for this is my blood, which has been shed for the salvation of many. I tell you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until I drink it again with you in the kingdom of heaven. Alla fine della cena, Yeshua prese la coppa e la versò. Lo eh, ringraziava il padre. Lo passò ai suoi discepoli dicendo prendete e bevete tutti perché questo è il mio sangue che è stato versato per la salvezza di tanti. Io vi dico che non berrò più dalla coppa del vino finché non lo beviamo tutti insieme nel regno dei cieli. Thank you. Grazie. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. May you be blessed. And please, if you want to join us here in Glenwood Springs, this beautiful mountain town, on 11 o'clock on Saturday, or even for the luncheon, please contact us. We would love to be with you and spend time together as it is written in the Word, to do not give up being together in community. Vi ringraziamo tutti. Shabbat Shalom. E per chiunque magari si possa trovare qui negli Stati Uniti, specialmente in Colorado, in questo bel paesino del, in mezzo alle montagne di Colorado, se volete far parte in persona, scriveteci, contattateci, che è bello stare insieme, come sta scritto nella parola di Hashem, non smettete di radunarvi quando è possibile. Okay. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.